What's up buddies? This is a follow-up video from my previous one. So here I would like to show you what actually happened when the system cannot be regulated anymore by top predators. So we break the top-down control of the system and we start to have what we call a bottom-up regulation of the system being regulated by the bottom of the pyramid. You may remember that I have shown you this graph with the effect of predation in the lake with fish predating grazers and grazers predating algae and I have showed you as well what happened when there is no predation so here I would like to go with you step by step from how a lake shifts from a clear beautiful lake to this turbid quirky grain soup so let me clear my whiteboard for a moment because that's make our lives easier. So this is our unseen lake, and obviously we are forgetting one very important environmental factor here. There is the sun. You know, the sun is responsible for emitting sun rays, and those sun rays are used by plants to make photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a basic metabolism of plants to grow, right? And once plants have enough nutrients and they have enough light to grow, I have told you before that they grow. We've seen before that when plants grow, we have more grazers in the system as well. And with more grazers in the system, we have more fish in the system as well. But here is where the things start to be different. We have nothing that eats fish anymore, remember? We have excluded all the top predators. So we have a lot of fish eating the grazers. What makes the amount of grazers in the system to reduce? With less grazers in the system, there is less algae being predated. So the amount of algae in the lake increase and the lake becomes a little bit more greener than it was before. Not very green, but greener. The trend is that the lake over time becomes greener and greener. And that's what we call a bottom-up control. The system is being controlled by what happens in the bottom of the pyramid, what happens with algae and macrophytes. Do you remember that algae and macrophytes, they compete for light and for nutrients? Nutrients are not a problem here because we have plenty of them inside the lake, enough to make this competition for nutrients not so strong. But can you see what happens with the light at the moment? The lake is so green on the top because of the algae that the rays, beams of the sun, they don't reach the bottom that much anymore. Think with me, what happens with a plant when the plant doesn't receive enough sunshine for a long period of time? It's nasty, right? The macrophytes will start to die in the bottom of the lake because they don't receive light. And if the macrophytes start to die, they cannot compete with algae for nutrients anymore. And that means that the algae have much much more nutrients now to grow <laughs> if they have more nutrients to grow if they have more light to grow why not they grow they grow to the point that the lake is so green light is limited to the very top layer of the lake and the rest of the lake is dark it's pitch dark Algae is a plant as well. If macrophytes die because they don't receive light, what should happen with all those algae that are not in the top layer? Yeah, you're right. They start to die as well. And there is a lot of algae now. So there is a lot of biomass dying in the system. You might have remembered what Trues and Harris, my colleagues, told you in their videos about bacteria and the composition. Our lake now is full of organic matter that's ready to be decomposed. So let's see if you can follow me with this chemical equation. Uh, all the organic matter that has been produced by algae death 
is now decomposed to CO2, carbonic gas, carbon dioxide, which is a form of gas, so we leave the water rich in the atmosphere. But that doesn't come at any cost. The cost for decomposing organic matter to CO2 use oxygen. So the bacteria breathe oxygen from inside the lake to degrade organic matter. And the consequence of it is that the levels of oxygen inside the lake, they drop drastically. This drastic drop in oxygen inside the lake is what we call oxygen depletion. You may have forgot, but we still have fish inside the lake. But the issue now is that we don't have oxygen. So you may be asking yourself, how can the fish breathe if there's no oxygen inside the lake? That's a serious problem, because they can't. We start to accumulate to have a severe fish mortality inside the lake. And you might have already seen those on the news. At this point, the lake has almost no water quality anymore and cannot be used by humans, for instance, for recreation or for drinking water supply. But it cannot hold biodiversity as well. And it can be actually be toxic to some organisms. It can be toxic to dogs, for instance. And when we reach this point, there's very few things we can do to save this lake. But what we have to do is a total reset of it. If you go back to my colleague's video, Queen, he gave you some very nice technological solutions for resetting the lake that could be applied to this situation here. As a take home message, I would like to just point out that most of those solutions, they involve the reduction of nutrients entering the system. And then I leave you as a homework just to brainstorm with yourself. How could we actually reduce the amount of nutrients entering the system? Nutrients in lakes are one of the biggest problems in Europe up to now and we still have no feasible sustainable solutions for dealing with it. So maybe you can think about it and come with an innovative solution for this problem. I hope you have enjoyed this, this video. I tried to bring you into some of the processes that happens inside the lake with biology, dealing with biology and how those processes can affect the resilience of lakes and how can make our lakes shift from what we call a healthy lake to an unhealthy lake. And maybe you can see those things around your city, your town. And that's it. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope that you you managed to, to follow me. And stay safe. Have fun. Enjoy. Cheers.